Hey, it's Thomas DeLauro with Jigsaw Health, and today I'm talking about hydrating when you're going for a hike in the desert. So here at Jigsaw, we're in Phoenix, Arizona, and in case you didn't know that, it's kind of in the desert. And as summer's starting to approach, we're thinking about getting outside, we're thinking about hiking, and that means that we're going to be depleting a lot more minerals, and we're going to be becoming a lot more dehydrated. So this video comes from the suggestions of some of our viewers who wanted to know how much water should we be drinking and how many minerals should we be taking in if we're going to be hiking when it's excessively warm? Well, first and foremost, let me explain how this balance works, how fluid balance works. You see, when it comes down to hiking and getting your electrolytes in, it all comes down to something called osmality. That osmality is the balance between water, sodium, and ultimately your electrolytes. And I always use this analogy because I think it makes a lot of sense. If you have two water balloons, one has just water in it, and the other one has water with sodium in it. If you were to magically connect those two water balloons, you would find that the water balloon that has the sodium would draw out almost all the water from the water balloon that doesn't have sodium. That is osmality working at its finest. That's called an isotonic state. We want to create the same kind of state when we're exercising. We want our body to be encouraged to hold on to water. But there are five different factors that we have to pay attention to, especially when it's hot out. Okay, one is the temperature. How hot is it? Okay, two is the intensity of your exercise. How hard are you working to encourage sweating? Okay, then we've got number three, which is gonna be your genetic factors. Like, who are you as a person? Do you naturally sweat a lot more? Then four, we have to look at humidity, okay? How humid is it? That's going to encourage you to sweat more. That's gonna create that perception of whether you're sweating more or not, simply because the water doesn't evaporate off your skin as easy. Okay, then we have to simply look at what kind of clothes are you wearing. It's a simple thought, but it plays a big difference. So those five factors can determine how quickly you're going to deplete water. But what is really, really important when it comes to working out in the heat is keeping your fluid levels more stable before your workout than during. And I'll explain how that works in just a second, but it's important that you know that water is absorbed through the small intestine. Okay, and it is required to have a level of sodium and even some levels of glucose to shuttle that water in from the small intestine. So if you don't have sodium coming in, that can't really dictate the absorption of water through the small intestine. So I'm going to get to how you balance that in one second. But like I mentioned, you want to keep your fluid levels high before your workout rather than just during. And here's a simple breakdown that might help you understand the kind of guidelines you should follow. When it's hot out, Try to consume about 50% of the water two hours before your workout. Then you want to try to consume about 20% of the water 15 minutes before your workout. Then you're taking sips of about 5% throughout the rest of your workout. Now, if you're using 100 milliliters, it would look something like this. Two hours prior to the workout, drink about 50 milliliters. 15 minutes prior to the workout, drink about 20 milliliters. Then if it's a four to six hour hike, Drink about five milliliters of water every 15 minutes to 30 minutes. Pretty darn simple right then and there. But this wouldn't be a Jigsaw Health magnesium video if I didn't bring magnesium into the equation. So we all know about magnesium. We all know its importance when it comes down to absorbing your minerals and actually getting a lot out of your body. But what about when we're hiking? Well, I think it's time that I reference a 2009 study that showed something pretty interesting and it's all gonna make sense and you're not gonna think I'm just this crazy mad scientist in just a second. So this 2009 study took two different groups. One group was given a magnesium supplement, one group was not, but both groups were exerting a lot of effort on treadmills. What the study concluded was that those that took a magnesium supplement ended up having much better performance on the treadmill, but they also had higher levels of blood glucose while working out. Why is that a good thing? Well, the higher levels of blood glucose tell us that their small intestine was absorbing glucose better and was also absorbing water better, all because magnesium was present. You see, we're so chronically depleted in magnesium, we're deficient in it, that when we actually put it back in our bodies, it starts to regulate fluid a lot better. So what should you do? Well, for one, take the Jigsaw Health Electrolyte Supreme along with your pre-workout fluids. That way you're getting yourself the minerals, but you're getting yourself the magnesium, not just the sodium like a lot of major brand electrolyte drinks will do. But you also wanna make sure that you're sipping slightly throughout the workout. So as always, keep it locked in here with Jigsaw Health. I'm Thomas DeLauer on the Clinical Scientific Advisory Board for Jigsaw Health, and we will see you in the next video.